All right, so a few examples of using the half angle identity to find uh, the exact value of a trig function. Uh, the, the question is cosine 75 degrees. Okay, so we had done this in section 5.3 with the sum and difference formula. Let's see how we can do it with a half angle formula. Uh, so cosine of 75, I need to rewrite this as some angle theta over 2, and I want my angle over 2 to be equivalent to 75 degrees. So I would use 150 divided by 2. The cosine formula is plus minus square root of 1 plus cosine theta. The theta that we use here is the same theta that we've got on top of this fraction. So 150 over 2. Uh, we need to, to choose plus or minus. Uh, you can do that at the beginning, you can do that at the end, or anywhere in between. Let's go ahead and just choose the plus minus. Since we're talking about 75 degrees, uh, that is in quadrant 1. And all angles, recall, recall all angles in quadrant 1 are positive. So we're going to want the positive here also. I'm going to go ahead and just drop the plus minus, as dropping it will imply positive. So we have the square root of... 1 plus, I need the cosine of 150 degrees. The cosine of 150 degrees is negative square root of 3 over 2 over 2. Now here's a trick that I'm going to do for you to, to show. Since this fraction right here, let me uh, kind of highlight it. Since this fraction is written over 2, I'm going to write all of these terms as fractions over 2. For example, 1 is the same as 2 over 2. And 2 is the same as 4 over 2. Now, if they're all written as fractions over 2, then those 2's can all cancel out. So this becomes square root of 2 minus square root of 3 over 4. This 4, since it's underneath a square root, is going to come out. The result is the square root of 2 minus square root of 3 over 2. Now that certainly looks like a different value than what we got with the sum and difference identity, but if you type this into the calculator correctly um, and hit enter, you'll get a decimal that is equivalent to the decimal of cosine of 75 degrees. I'll let you try that on your own if you want to. Tangent of 7 pi over 12. Um, I need to start the same way. Tangent of something divided by 2, which is 7 pi over 12. Uh, I don't like, again, we've seen this before, I don't really like 7 pi over 12, so I'm going to take 7 pi over 12 and convert it into a degree. So that would be 7 times 180 divided by 12 is equal to 105 degrees. So what number divided by 2 gives 105 degrees? and that would be 210 degrees. Now with the tangent, there are two formulas. You can use either one, it doesn't matter because they're equivalent to each other, so I'll just use the first one. It would be one minus cosine of 210 degrees over the sine 210 degrees. So that's 1 minus. Now we have to think of where 210 degrees are. Uh, 210 degrees is right here. It's 30 degrees past 180. So this is the point in question that we want. Point is negative square root of 3 over 2, negative half. So the cosine of 210 is negative square root of 3 over 2 sine of 210 is negative half. I'm going to do the same trick I did on the last problem. I'm going to change the 1 to 2 over 2. Uh, 
Oops, that's already over two. And once everything is written over two, then we can cross them all out. The result is two plus square root of three over negative one, which would be the same as negative two minus square root of three. Okay, I want to skip the next example in your notes and go right to the last three here that involve proving identities. Uh, so here we're starting with two cosecant 2x. Now, we don't have a cosecant 2x, but we have a sine 2x, and cosecant and sine are reciprocals, so whenever we see a reciprocal function of the three original ones, we just use uh, the appropriate reciprocal. So this is the same as two over sine 2x. Okay. Well, that would be then 2 over sine 2x. Um, sine 2x is 2. Uh, I believe we had sine x, cosine x. That's the same as with the 2's dividing out 1 over sine x, cosine x. All right, well now we have to get from this to this up here, and let's see, let's see if we can get close. Um, if I just were to bring the sine to the other side um, by writing it as its reciprocal, I get cosecant x over cosine x. Okay. Um, well, I, I don't want cosecant x. I want cosecant squared x. So how could we get cosecant squared x? Um, well, let's see. To get cosecant squared, I need to multiply by another cosecant, right? Now, well, I can't just do that unless I also divide by a cosecant. So then I've essentially multiplied by 1. That's fair to do. So the numerator becomes cosecant squared x. Denominator is now cosine x, cosecant x. Okay, this cosecant Let's bring up to the top as its reciprocal. So we have cosecant squared x times sine x. And all that's left in the denominator is cosine x. Well, look here. We have sine divided by cosine. And sine divided by cosine is our good friend tangent. So we have cosecant squared x tangent x and that's proven. Next example, we have sine 3x, and the problem with that is we don't have a, a sine 3x formula, we have a sine 2x formula. Well, we also have a sum and difference formulas from the last section, so I'm gonna begin by writing sine 3x as sine maybe x plus 2x. Okay, the, the sum formula for sine then is sine of the first, cosine of the second, plus, um, it would then be sine of the second, cosine of the first. I think the formula on the notes has these reversed, but as long as they're both there, it's okay. Now, the cosine 2x and the sine 2x, we have new sum formulas, or not sum, but double angle formulas for those, to take care of those. And so let's use those. Now, if you recall, the cosine 2x, there are three different options for cosine 2x. And there's one that kind of looks like that. So that's the one I'm going to use for cosine 2x, is the one that kind of looks similar to this one. So you can go in your notes and you can look and you see, you'll know exactly which one I'm talking about. So we've got sine x times cosine 2x is 
2 cosine squared x minus 1 plus sine 2x 2 sine x cosine x that's times cosine x so now we've got I'm just gonna leave this as it is sine x 2 cosine squared x minus 1 plus I can multiply these together and it's 2 sine x cosine squared x uh, if you notice like I notice there is a sign that is in common to both of these terms. If I factor that sign out, I leave behind 2 cosine squared x minus 1 plus 2 cosine squared. And then these two cosine squareds are like terms. We can add them together and that will take us right to the end. Sine x times 4 cosine squared x minus 1. Last problem gives us another multiple angle look. We've got sine 4x. Uh, for sine 4x, I'm going to split it up. Sine 2x plus 2x, and I'm going to use my sine sum and difference formula to expand this out, which says you want sine of the first cosine of the second plus cosine of the first sine of the second. Now I've got a lot of double angles and each of these double angles I'm going to write as their double angle formula. Uh, sine 2x, 2 sine x cosine x times cosine 2x I'm going to use again the, the second of the options. I'm going to use this option, the one that looks like that. Cosine 2x is 2 cosine squared x minus 1. Cosine 2x here is another 2 cosine squared x minus 1. Sine 2x is 2 sine x cosine x. Okay, let me do just one step to rewrite so you can see exactly what I'm looking at. 2 sine x cosine x times 2 cosine squared x minus 1 plus, I'm going to pull this to the front of this term. Two terms. Are they like terms? They are. They're both sine x cosine x times the quantity 2 cosine x squared minus 1. I've got 2 here, 2 here, add them together and you get 4 sine x cosine x times the quantity 2 cosine squared x minus 1. And that's what we wanted.